uh, welcome. If you see this as a recorder, or as, as a, something recorded, uh, <laughs> Jogo is a, is a new platform that was launched just four months ago. And uh, the goal of it is to facilitate the creation of uh, open science and in, uh, in participatory innovation pro uh, projects. So uh, here you have um, many individuals that are currently involved in developing um, projects around vaccination. That's our first research program uh, called. Uh, um, co-immune and uh, the goal is to address um, the, the, the contemporary challenges of vaccination. One is uh, the vaccination hesitancy, the other one is uh, access to vaccination. And all the projects are being developed uh, openly and uh, in an uh, in, uh, accessible manner so that anyone uh, can also ask for the help of the community, um, provide also um, uh, specific actions to perform to other members of the community. Um, so the goal is to really create also um, free innovation in the sense that we're not here to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to develop, uh, you know, a specific product that could be done by, by startups. Uh, and it's really more to how do we tackle problems that are not solvable typically by the business approach. So that's why having an open and collaborative, uh, you know, approach to those problems is necessary. Maybe then what I propose to everyone is that we go around and just present ourselves so we know who's there and uh, who's talking. So if you want, um, I can start. So my name is Lola and uh, I'm um, the communications manager and I'm animating the community for Jogo. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Camille Maslow and I am uh, the program coordinator uh, for Jogo, uh, so the co-immune program. I'm very happy to be here as well. So um, I I'm Luca, I'm here one of the main developers for the Jogo platform and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so hi everyone, I'm, I'm sorry I don't have the video on, the internet is not really great at where, where I am right now. Uh, I hope that's okay. Um, I am the team leader for Hera, the mobile app for the vaccination rates of, uh, like, in, uh, uh, update of the situation. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm Jeanne, and I'm working with uh, Mia Hela here on uh, vaccine hesitancy. Yeah. I think we will be joining this. <laughs> we will be using just one computer, otherwise we will have a strange effect if each of us logs uh, yeah, that's true, that's true. the yeah. session. Yeah, okay. Right. So we are uh, we are the team, part of the team that developed a game about vaccine hesitancy. And yeah. Hi, I'm Bastian. I'm a research fellow here at Bakery in Paris, and I do a citizen science on personal data, largely around health issues. I'm William. I'm working on the Jogo uh, project called that is doing a live Twitter sentiment analysis. Uh, Hi, I'm Katya. I am currently a PhD student at Max Planck Institute studying the development and the evolution of brains. But I've done fine arts in my previous life and I've worked as a graphic designer, so I'm trying to help in UX and UI where I can. And I'm like very much into data visualization. And I have worked a lot with the Mozilla community, so I love like open science and I'm a mentor there and trying to push open science forward as much as possible. I'm just going to move forward, if not. All right. Um, so today, as you can see in the document that I shared, that I will share again because apparently uh, people who arrive after do not see it. If you click on this document, you will see at the beginning the agenda. So today we're going to uh, try to talk about what are the best practices to document an open project and uh, specifically on, on Drogo and how you can facilitate collaboration and reproducibility. So um, first, uh, I we want to show you what already exists on the platform. So uh, as I sent to all of you, um, project leaders, but uh, people who are here who are not project leaders don't have it, is the project documentation guide. So um, if you click on the link that uh, I can share again, uh, you have the project document documentation guide, sorry for my English. Uh, here and in this in this document um, is um, all the fields that we have we feel are necessary 
for a good documentation and that have been um, decided with the help of the Committee for Science, Ethics and Impact of Coimmune and uh, based on diver different sources that we have. Uh, so of course, if you have any questions about anything on this, uh, this is the moment to ask them because um, it will be used then on, uh, for, for reviews and evaluation and helping the people who are going to give feedback. And so um, this project documentation guide, we implemented directly on the platform on the editing page of your project. So maybe here uh, I will share my screen so you can see. Up. One second here. So here you can see on my screen the project of Jogo. And uh, so if you go on the edit, uh, let, me, let me do it live for you. So here I'm on the project of Jogo as Jogo. So I can go and click edit, right? And then when I go in here, I have the description that we used to have that we filled in. And now we have a new button that's called fill detailed information. If you click on that button, you will have all the different categories that are also in the project description guide here. And then they, you can just fill them in directly here, right? pretty straightforward and you can uh, make it titles and colors and very nice, add photos, add videos, make it as, as, as best as you can. So it's easily readable and like easily understandable and really straightforward um, and really clear. All right. Uh, if I may, Lola? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> um, could you go back to uh, the form? Oh, the, okay, it's okay. Um, just so you know, there are many categories that may not apply to your project. For example, if you do a, a data analysis project, <coughs> you, um, you may not uh, have uh, some, yes, thank you. Uh, so s not everything applies to your project. We have tried to develop something that can apply to everything. So um, the things that are not relevant for you, don't bother too much um, and feel free to also give us feedback so we can adapt uh, both the format and the content uh, to your needs. That's right. it. <laughs> Do you have any question on, on any questions on that part or suggestions or considerations already? I just have a question um, for like my my project. It's not really tailored to have an elevator pitch. Um, so can I just instead put the description of what the project is without necessarily making it in the format of an elevator pitch? Yes, basically it's just to make a really short description doesn't have okay. to be like how you would speak it in an elevator pitch or like just briefly describe your project in non-technical language and the issue you're addressing and your what solution you're proposing and the results you expect to produce something like this really short it's, it's a, okay. an easy way for anyone that is not a specialist of vaccination or data science to understand what's your goal basically what you're doing okay and uh, uh, just specifically for the project, um, this elevator pitch would uh, look like more like an abstract. Then, okay. yes. But, but with non-technical terms, absolutely. Yeah. With non-technical terms, an abstract for everyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. I think uh, PNAS called that significant statements. I'm not sure right. everyone knows what is PNAS, Mark. <laughs> the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like basically the layman abstract. Yeah. Layperson. Okay. 
Uh, any other questions on this part? No, we're good. Okay, then I really also wanted to show you really quickly again um, uh, the document tab and the need also object on the platform that can be really useful for documenting your project. So I share my screen again here. So um, here you see my screen, you see the project logo and most of you already know, but I'm just showing it again. So here you'll have the about with the specific sections. See if you feel funding, here you will have the title funding and it will appear, each category will appear here. Then you have the need objects. And some of you, most of you have already filled needs, but I'm just showing it again, just in case. And if you see here, a little bit has changed. It's not a date, a due date anymore. Is it, is it urgent or not? Here you just put the need title, you can attach a document, you can put the details of your needs and the skills related to that need. And then I don't know if you have noticed yet, but all the needs are now in a specific page where they are all listed here. So it's really a nice way for people to help you will be to find your need in there because they will know like, okay, there's needs I can, t I can help with and here they are. Okay, so that's one thing. And the other one was if you just want to upload a document, you can upload it here. Or you can upload, attach it to a, a post if you want to say something about it. Yes. So is there anything about this that you would have questions about? Is that good? All right. And then, um, so, uh, this documentation that you're going to put on your project page um, is something you can use and we're going to talk about this a little bit after is GitLab and GitHub. There's um, this README document that is used with all the guidelines on how to, to collaborate on the project and you can write in there. Also, I don't know if you saw in the project description guide, in the project documentation guide, uh, we added a how to contribute section. And I think this is a really <coughs> important one. And it's also related to um, the README on GitHub. It's like, if you see here, how to contribute, you can describe how people can join your projects, instructions for collaboration tools and communication methods. This, this is really useful for making your project open because this is how people will help you, right? Sorry, I'm repeating myself. Yes, bugging. Just one question. Yeah. It, the, um, to Lola and all the project leaders, uh, does anyone need to go through uh, these uh, the different sections? Do we have time for that, or Lola? Or is it something you need? Do you have questions about some categories? or? So I think we should, can go through it if there are questions. Yes. If not, if That's everything seems clear to everyone, mm -hmm. I don't think. And, and I would like uh, the next part is to show the criteria for a review. And I think that's a part that can be more interesting to go into detail if necessary. So, um, so let me uh, again share my screen, but you can find the document link also in the in the document that I shared on the chat, right? Uh, under the number two criteria for review. So I will share my, sc my screen again. Okay. And I also sent it to you via email, right? But here yeah. you have the guide to constructive feedback and evaluation. It's uh, in, in the process of being validated by the members of the committee for your um, ethics, science and impact. But uh, it's basically going to look like this. So you have three main categories, approach, implementation, and impact, right? And then you have different criteria in each categories. And the score will be given between one and five. And we put uh, an idea of what is one gonna look like and what is five, right? For each one and the three also. And, um, so 
all of this will be done anonymously by the reviewers. The scores will be kept private between the projects and Jogo and the members of the CC. And the comments will be public on the platform, but still anonymous, right? Um, so do you want to go through the criteria? Would that be useful? Anyone? <laughs> Okay, I think you're really reading them right now. <laughs> um, maybe Toma, if you want to say a word or two uh, about the criteria. Sure. Um, so we, we try to make things um, as simple as possible. Uh, it's not been uh, an easy work. Um, the goal, as you can see here, is really not to put uh, the, the importance on the, the development of the project. We, we, we are aware that um, uh, most of the projects are, are, are new or in, in, are in an early stage of development. So the goal is really actually to, uh, to prepare you uh, to enter a second phase of development. And, and so uh, here we want to, to make sure that you, you understand what are the goals for you, for what are the next steps, um, and, and, and what kind of methodology you want to, uh, to, uh, to, to develop and use, um, and what are the kind of uh, uh, ecosystem you want to, to put you know your project within uh, so it's 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 really like yeah, to write a grant proposal or make an application and, uh, and and one thing we didn't explain also and I think this is a, a good moment to do it so all, all this work uh, at the end means also something uh, because so we are preparing the second phase of epidemic that we start in the beginning of 2020 um, in, in, in February and and uh, and so uh, the, the goal of that second phase will be actually to focus on all the active projects that uh, got through that crisis threshold. The point here, uh, on, so on the 18th of December, we, we will not be um, awarding projects and we'll be, we will, I mean, like, we will be providing some, some awards about who, who got the, like, the best approach, the best implementation, the best impact, but those are not um, like, um, awards that are, um, how do you say this in English, uh, that will eliminate you know, other projects. You know, any projects that um, you know, actually went through the documentation process um, and are active and wants to go further, they will get actually to be part of the second phase of Epidemium. And so all co -immune, of Co-immune, oh, yes. Sorry. Uh, yes, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> of Co-immune. Um, and Revealing lapsus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, for the one that doesn't know, Epidemium is uh, is a past program um, that uh, I've, I've done in the past uh, about cancer and and some coimmune co is based on some of the learning that we had about Epidemium. Um, so so the second phase of of coimmune we are currently designing it, but uh, basically all the energy and all the resources that we have at Jogo and with our partners will be entirely dedicated to the existing. Uh, project. So we won't be in the process of creating new projects anymore. Uh, so it's, it's going to be really a maturing uh, phase. And, uh, and so we'll be also working on trying to figure out what are the best resources and the best uh, uh, awards we can provide you uh, by the end. So to help you either publish or release a proof of concept, a working proof of concept, uh, and, and, and get visibility. Another thing is, um, you saw those three main criteria, approach, implementation. Uh, Mark, please, the, the, your microphone. Um, and uh, so there are three main criteria. Uh, one is impact, implementation, and approach. And so we're going to provide um, a specific uh, award, as I was telling uh, you before. And those three projects, uh, or any projects that are available to, uh, to, to join us, will be invited to, uh, to be at uh, the Change Now Summit that will be at the end um, of January in Paris. It's a huge event in the um, Grand Palais, which is uh, from the same age as Eiffel Tower. It's a huge place for the one that knows it. Uh, you can write, you can you know, Google it, uh, Grand Palais. Yeah, maybe you can put the link, uh, maybe Lola, I don't know. Uh, and uh, or towards the event. So it's called Change Now Summit. Uh, and all the, all, all, like, it's going to be like 
uh, the largest event dedicated to uh, to uh, to positive change and uh, positive technologies. Like, uh, and um, so there would be a lot of uh, organizations, startups, uh, you know, public bodies, um, communities that would be there. Um, so it's a huge visibility. It's a huge place for networking if you want to uh, uh, go. Uh, and develop your project and your network in this area. So um, we'll be inviting you, you'll be part of our booth. So we have, we have, we have like a, a huge booth there. Um, and uh, so, so that's, that's basically uh, one of the things that we'll be providing to uh, um, the project that we'll have done uh, also the best documentation. Uh, so that's like one like a part goal, you know, for, for the 18s here. But at the end, we'll be uh, helping all the projects that will have gone through the documentation process. Yeah, great. Thank you for the reminder, Thomas. Can, can, um, you, can you ask one question? Of course. Okay, so the Change Now Summit, that's a really, really nice event. So we wanted to clarify that. Again, there will be just one uh, project selected. Three. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay, good. Thank there you. will actually be a prize given by uh, category so there will be a, a total score on for approach a total score for implementation and a total score for impact okay so that's three prices and yeah. then as Thomas said uh, so three projects will go to change now summit there will also be a price uh, by Excelia who is a company who will um, help the project during uh, one day Right, and there uh, might be a third price, and we're in discussion uh, for a third price. Um, and of course, as Thomas said, the projects that don't receive prices but have documented the project thoroughly will be accompanied and supported during the second phase of QM. Right. If I if I may add, uh, it's not as you said, like awards and and prizes. Uh, like are uh, kind of a, a luxury for us but what really matters is uh, that what you do have an impact and evaluating and self-evaluation is a very good way uh, to increase the impact you have and rethink um, how you've been working and uh, develop further perspectives so um, it's uh, it's as well something we want to promote, not only for Moon but for every project on Juggle, so that self-evaluation is done and it, it helps us as well, helping you uh, reorientate your actions and also putting you in contact with the appropriate stakeholders and the good uh, resource, like key resources and key people. Yes. Definitely. Uh, Is there any maybe, questions on this? Maybe yeah. something to add also. I'm thinking of like uh, potential uh, future people that will uh, see this video like maybe in the next days or even week. Um, like just taking into account that uh, if, if you might also have been interested in, in participating in the Change Now event, it's only if you create projects uh, that belong to the Coming program, right? It's not any project at all. Yes, we're focusing right now. Uh, so we're giving this um, right now. What I just showed is the the guide to constructive feedback and evaluation can be used to give feedback to any projects, but the evaluation and the scores and the prices are all for the Coimmune program. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there will be a ceremony where you can see the projects that have won the prices uh, on the 18th. Uh, an interesting thing to note as well is it's not, uh, it is an objective evaluation made by independent uh, reviewers, which are as well members of our committee um, for ethics, science and impact. Um, so we try our best to provide you the best resources to evaluate your work. Um, so this is something to note as well. Yeah. And this grid has been, as Lola said, reviewed, collaborated, and validated uh, by this scientific committee. Yes. So, so us complimenting yeah. you guys doesn't help at all, right? Lastly. <laughs> what? Sorry. 
I, I was just making a joke saying uh, I, uh, us complimenting you guys doesn't help. <laughs> no, I actually cannot because we're not deciding who wins. <laughs> okay, just in case, you all look great. <laughs> <laughs> great. Very good, very right good. Away. What's your project again? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, also, if you have any questions that come to your mind, of course, and you, you cannot speak, but you can write them down uh, in the document that I paste here once again, just in case. Um, there's a section for questions in every uh, part. Um, so then, uh, as uh, we were showing you the criteria for evaluation, um, there is one that I wanted to show you, and that is also why we're having this event today. It's Open and Reproducible Dissemination Strategy. So it's kind of a big title, but uh, the most important is that uh, your project is actually open. And that is why we're having Katya also here speak about this. You know, what, how do you do, what is an open project and how do you do to have it open? Open doesn't mean just opening your source code or putting uh, lots of documents on your project page or documenting it, it it's also um, a little bit more. So I, I propose that maybe Katya here, you can um, talk to us about this. Okay, uh, I think it would be best if I share my screen. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um... But, but we can't see you, Katya. I don't know if that's on purpose or not, but... <laughs> you can't see me? No. Ah, because I stopped the video, I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> um, but the problem is that I have so many tabs open in my Google and I have to select a tab. I can't select the whole Google to share with you. Is there a way I can... Ah, here, I found it. Great. Do you see my screen? Yes, we do. That's the document you shared, right? Yes. Okay. So I would like to quickly just, um, yes, what Lola just said that basically when you make your project open, meaning that you put your code openly available, it's not enough. You have to design your project for the open. And that means that you think from the beginning on about criteria that make it easy for people to join your project. and. Um, to reuse your code and to replicate your results and that's all part of it and so it's very very important um, that when people see your project first most often like what we say is the first thing that they see is in github you call it the readme file in java it will be the section like where you describe your project with the elevator pitch and elements like that and what you want is that it's very very clear um, and i want to show you just in terms of examples so that you get an idea this is one project where you get like clearly when you just scroll through the readme um, you have a vision statement, like what they want to do. You have visualizations of what to expect from the outcome of the project. Um, you have easy instructions for how to get started and how to uh, install it. And then also output where you can like easily measure your errors if you want to really work with the code that they provide. And links to here, contributing. They really want you to like be able to join the project. So you go to the contributing um, page and you find instructions on what you can do. And then they say like file an issue. Okay, so people may not know GitHub, what is filing an issue? And they give you instructions on how to do that actually. And then they have a style guide. They have like instructions for how you can fork their repository to really join working them and how you can make pull requests to their work. Um, this is a code project. And now just uh, for another example, uh, another contributing file where people are really invited, okay, they are welcomed. Let's think about together like what we want to do with this project. And here there will be a not yet curated folder where you can just push your code, even if it's not documented, if it's not curated yet, we can do that together, I will help you. And it's really actively inviting people to join the project and not just being there available, but actively trying to engage a community. And then also um, telling them how they can do that, like with issues, using pull requests. These are features available on GitHub and GitLab, but you have the same uh, equivalents also associated with your uh, project on uh, Juggle. That's another file where you like just to. Wow. <laughs> <Rainbow>. <laughs> Sorry, it's my project, this one. Yes. <laughs> 
uh, the idea was just to show you quickly, like you have a, a vision for your project, you tell the people why you are motivated to do that, like what's your niche, what makes you unique and why it's a, like cool for people to join your project. What's the long term goal, what's the short term goal, how can they collaborate, there will be issues that describe in more detail how people can join, there's a brain mappers file where they can be um, like visually find a tutorial on how to join us. If they're curious, there's information where they can read more or watch more. Um, the join us invitation again for the project and then developers instructions if people just don't want to use the project but if they want to reuse our code and build their own projects or join our development efforts um, and then there are tools that can help you to do that juggle is one platform that's amazing giving you guidelines and instructions and then there's other tools for example this is something i learned when working with mozilla uh, they have the open canvas they call it and i think it's really really cool to make you you don't have to put that openly available if you don't want to but you can and it's a very short overview of making yourself your mind up about your project you give it a short title can you see my mouse cursor when i move yes cool so you give it a short title and then you think about the problem um and here's instructions on what act actually you should think about and you want to have like the top three problems that you have in mind that you want to solve like why is your project so important and you want to get that across in these little boxes that you have here so that your user or potential user really gets the idea within the next two minutes and you think about actively like what's the key metrics that's important for you if you want to apply for funding people will ask you about that how do you measure the success of your project uh, what's your unique value proposition as mentioned like what's your needs and then the main problem you are solving and um, What's your user profile? So which audience are you actually wanting to target? Uh, is it a certain age range or people with a certain background? And then which use user channels will you engage? Um, and so that they really know how to get in touch with you and that you are happy if they get in touch with you. You're like They can feel free to send you an email or to get on your Jitter or on your Juggle uh, newsfeed or something. Um, and then you have the, the contributors that like also contribute, not only use your project, but contribute code, for example. What exactly do you need? Like what's the profile that you need? Do you need designers that help you with UI UX? Do you need programmers that know web development or C or C++ and things like that. And the more clear you, like when you try to fill in this table, you will realize that you become yourself more clear about these things. And that's actually very helpful to feel exactly what uh, Lola and Camille presented before uh, on Joggle, uh, your document description. And uh, um, there's also tools like Roadmap. And I want to show you one example. It's also here an example from GitHub, um, just to show other projects because with Juggle you may all be familiar. And you can have like even tick lists where you say like, this is my short term goals, this is my long term goals, so that user when they join, you know exactly where they stand and where they can help. Uh, you can also use tools that actually- uh, Sorry, I'm interrupting you because this can go easily in your progress report in the project description on Juggle. The, you can use this way of putting a long term goal, short term goal, and having like this in, in the progress report, you can show like this easily. Uh, it's a really great way to show it. And what um, Katya, you showed just before, the canvas, also could be a, a good way, um, you know, if you feel it all and it, just, and it fits into that canvas, then it can be really easily readable by anyone and who can understand everything about your project in just one, one picture, basically. And so this is great also that you, you could add this image, add it as an image or as, as a document on Jogo. And it's a great way to make it easier for people to understand what your project is about and how to contribute to it. And just just before, before you continue, Kata, um, I think these tools are great. And I would like to encourage everyone um, we, to um, also share their own tools. Uh, so these ones will be shared on the platform and you will have you will be able to access it uh, but there are many different tools like project management tools and what we're trying to do with Joggle and Coimun is also to build a uh, commons wow. so we are a sharing community so feel free if you have something that works very well for you please share it with the community and let the other knows no so so that they can also use it and um yeah and we can uh, inspire it by your experience so maybe <laughs> yes, what we can do for that is uh, we can create a, a juggled group uh, dedicated to open documentation where people can you know share good, pra good practices and examples mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's fantastic. And also now people that are joining the call and have their own ideas, just feel free to, Lola, share the document, the Google Doc, like, please edit 
um, as much as you can, like put your own tools down there. These are just examples I'm presenting now. And there are many other great ways. And we would be super happy also to learn, you know, at some point you're just running down your street and you know the things that you know. And I'm super happy to learn uh, new tools and ways to, to deal with these problems uh, of simplifying your project as much as you can to make it understandable for everyone. And I want to show you one more tool. Um, what happened now? Can you still hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and I'll try to do this. Um, I went to Joggle and I copy pasted basically the vision from the website, the first thing you see, and um, then I pasted it here. And this is a tool, the AppGora 5, which is actually for a rocket. And if you want to describe a rocket and then you use the physical terms that you need and an engineer will understand you, but nobody else will understand how a rocket works. And that's the idea behind this tool. So they used a database of the most used 100,000 words. That's not enough to describe your scientific project, but it makes you get an idea of everything that's read underlined. You may think about these terms if they are now in our age understandable by everyone, or if you want to rethink and actually try to use more simple words or more general terms, if there's a better way for describing. And there is another web app, the Hemingway app, all the links are in the Google Doc, uh, which basically shows you if your phrases structures are too complicated or if you're using like adverbs and stuff that's unnecessary and just making things more complicated. And I pasted Joggle here and it's like all happy, everything is good, <laughs> no <laughs> colors. And these are tools that can easily help you to get out of your own bubble where you talk with people that know exactly what you're working on and that have the same like underlying vocabulary. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then one thing for, especially for scientific projects, this is in terms of project structure, nothing to do with documentation, but uh, again, when we talk about how to make your project open, design for the open and think for the open, project structure is so important and can help you as a PI on the project very much. And so I wanted to show you just the data science cookie cutter, which I like very much. So it's suggesting you a project structure where you have the root repository containing a source directory and um, you make a reports directory where figures go so that people can know exactly where they find things, a documentation, a readme file, uh, the data repository with raw data, process data, and external data when you just import stuff from other um, and a lib uh, folder where you can uh, have external libraries and stuff and it's totally um, customizable but a very nice suggestion for structuring your project and that's it thank you very much great thank you we have questions Do you have any questions to Katya on this or <laughs> it's fantastic I loved it I learned so many things actually Katya it, it was great it was great. No, beautiful ideas. A lot of stuff like that definitely can be implemented or full of even as general kind of ways to give templates to kind of guide people. I, I love it. Beautiful. Thanks God it was recorded. I will go back to the recording to, to make screenshots. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Great. Does anyone have any questions or any tools they want to share with everyone else? Uh, so I do have a question um, and I don't know if it can be explained in a couple of minutes, but so the first thing that we saw on GitLab and GitHub really, I think requires an, uh, sort of like someone who's experienced on, on preparing such documents. Uh, and what if we don't have that kind of expertise in our, in our um, group that can like, basically what I understand is sort of putting the code in a documented way that can be understood and used. Uh, not, I don't mean the letter um, tools, but the first one. So what if we don't uh, sort of have that experience in our, in our team that can prepare it on GitLab and like, I don't know. Yeah. Do you want me to answer that question? Um, uh, yeah, was it for me? Sorry. Um, you can just easily copy paste from any other pro like project and replace. That's a nice way to start. That's why I was showing things more as an inspiration so that you get an example because it's so much more easy to start from an example. And what they use is markdown format. So that's a language that you find in Jupyter Notebooks that you find like in many places. You can write books with it. You can write documentation files with it. It's just for writing down um, your text, being able to link it to images and being able to link it to, to like external websites. and. Um, so you can easily start by copying from another project and filling it in for your own project. Uh, 
I like having code on GitHub and GitLab because it's very clear who contributed and it has a nice timeline in terms of versioning control. That's very interesting because when you think about project, you do something with your code and you have results and then you develop your code further and you will have different results in a different project. But then anyone that is in the meantime working on your first code and using this one will not like if it's on GitHub, they will be able to refer to your first release and that makes it very nice and very transparent and very open. Don't be afraid if your code is not documented. You will get the questions that will help you document it. And there's also more and more tools that you can easily pip install that will help you like, like docs making it automatically, like having guidelines, how you for yourself document your code and how that will be exported in a documentation for users automatically. And these are just things you can Google offline and in, um, like have a read and if you have questions you can get back to to us or to me or to anyone from the team and we are happy to help and these are just inspirations also how you can um transport what you see on github to the juggle platform because they have an awesome user guide documentation guide um and you can just get inspirations from github and gitlab you don't have to use it it's just a nice way if you want to share code and use their versioning system and you can link from juggle to github or from github to juggle both ways because Joggle has this unique feature that they have this whole community behind and they want to try to link people. And that's something you don't have on GitHub. Um, yeah, thank, <clears throat> first of all, thank you for the answer. And I do definitely believe that the, the usefulness of it, but as someone who, so just a small thing. So we actually, uh, to develop the app that we design, we actually paid a company to do it. And I have, I haven't heard about GitLab or GitHub until four or five months ago. And I even had to like have a really have to bag and bother a friend to be able to upload it on the, on GitLab and share it with you guys. So this is where I'm coming from, like uh, sort of having no background in that, in that sense. Uh, and I will definitely look into those documents and everything and uh, understanding the documentation. And now we have some people who can who can actually work on that. Maybe you might remember from the previous meeting, we have a new uh, co-founder. Uh, but I still kind of felt uh, lost. But again, let me go over everything and like see at to, to what point that I can come. And then, as you said, I can try to like uh, ask for your guidance. So, so yeah. thank you. Uh, I'd like to be yeah definitely we'll be there to to answer your questions if you have any and luca is doing this documentation on the code for Jogo for helping everyone to contribute on Jogo. so he can have also advice for you guys to do this on your code and uh, also kata and a, a lot of people who are here today also use code use data and and use gitlab and github for this so it can actually if you have like once you have looked at it and taken some time if you have precise questions i'm sure a lot of people here could help you um yeah i would like to react on your comment aral uh, thank you very much first for your for this feedback i think it's very important for us to know what you're struggling uh, with uh, so that we can help you the best way possible um, and so I have a question for you. Would, would that be, uh, would that have been and will be helpful if we develop a form of tutorial um, and maybe submit it uh, to you for corrections or inputs uh, to guide you through this process so, so that if other people are struggling with it, um, they, can, they can follow this tutorial. Would that have helped or do you need actually someone uh, to do it with you, like a more, um, what, what, what would help the best? What, what can we do? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, so I don't even know enough to know which one would be <laughs> helpful for me. <laughs> I'll definitely go over everything. As, like I said, I'm very, very far away from this arena. My, I mean, I can tell you about pathology and like taking care of patients, but this is way over my head uh yeah. so i don't even know if it's like something you can understand with a tutorial and i don't want to say i would definitely i would feel that's a disrespect for people who are actually pros at this kind of things because if you told me if i give you a tutorial to uh see a patient that would not work so <laughs> i would feel disrespecting people who are 
actually doing it pro as a pro. So yeah. let me just go over everything and work on that for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. uh, and then try to see if I can beg some friends to do that for me and ask you guys other questions. <laughs> and also, Ahal, I wanted to thank you so much and, and everyone here, all the project leaders here, for all the time and effort support you put into this. I mean, I know um, we're like asking a lot with the documentation, for example, but it's also for really bigger than us. I really think uh, the goal of everyone here is like, to help uh, everyone else and I think that's awesome and I, I really want to thank you for this and and I think humanity will thank you <laughs> thanks and, and also <laughs> about the speech <laughs> also about the github and gitlab thing uh, so I, I think we could have something like kind of a tutorial to to kind of help people who uh, had never used that but have a code somewhere but didn't upload on github or gitlab to do that, and if uh, still the tutorial, is, uh, the tutorial is not enough, then you can always um, send a message to us, and we'll be sure to add them ourselves, and then share the project with you, and uh, accompany, accompany you uh, for that. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you for that. I mean, a, a tutorial would be actually great, and it not necessarily have to be live. Like, if you guys, I again, I don't know anything about it, but if you guys can, like, send us YouTube videos or like stuff that you like record yourself or something like that, that would be amazing, uh, really. Cool. Um, also, uh, I, uh, sorry, I can't pronounce the name, uh, Salman. If you added it as, if you added it as one of the needs on your project, uh, I'm sure someone can come up and help. I'd be happy to help you uh, with, Putting whatever you need on GitHub. Uh, if you add the need, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely sign up to help you. Too. No problem. Uh, th th thank you for that. Yeah, we, we, yeah, I haven't really thought of it that way, but yeah, we can definitely put it as a need because obviously we need it. So <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice way of using Drupal. So it's true. You can also put needs for documentation, of course. Does anyone else have any questions? Or, yeah, anything? Tools you want to share? Um, good practices? <laughs> I can maybe share a repository. We are doing hackathons from time to time, and last year I curated a very large one, and we made a resources repository where we link to tutorials that we think are good. And there's a section on GitHub and Git, like if that would be of interest, I could post that into the Google document yeah, and definitely. check out the tutorials we link there. We try to give like how many minutes they take and what's the level of, but you will see. <laughs> so I've just created a, a Dragon group for best practices of documentation for open projects. Uh, I shared the link in the chat. So uh, you know all the links that you uh, that you've shared so far or you want to share, you can actually put them there. Um, I, I just want to point out that uh, I seem silent, but uh, actually I'm working with uh, Luca on some bugs uh, we found uh, on the platform right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Man. Thanks, Vitalio. Yeah. You're welcome. Dorian. <laughs> Great. Uh, well, we're nearing the end of the event, so if there is anything more anyone wants to add at the moment so yeah may maybe about like um uh, in general like co contributing to to, to the um, juggle code so you know juggle is is fully like uh, open we have a so all the all the code is on gitlab so if you go on our website juggle.io or on app the juggle.io there is a link to contribute uh, in the footer of those both uh, platforms so uh, feel free if you want to help uh, and, and want to contribute on, on the on the platform. Um, we'll, we'll be, we need uh, contributors and we'll be happy uh, to have that. Uh, we'll be, we are working on a really nice contributing uh, document, so it will be easier for anyone to contribute, but for now, 
um, if, if you really want to contribute and, and don't understand the current documentation, feel free to send an email to hello at juggle.io or directly me also, uh, Luca at juggle.io and we'll be happy to, to answer. Yeah, okay. And um, yeah, just, just so that you have the last word, Lola. <laughs> um, so um, just to do continuously do what Luca said, uh, Juggle is a, a open and contributive community, uh, but not only on the code, uh, on what we're doing as well, uh, whether it's on the program or how we animate the community or the kind of project. So if every, if anyone has been uh, looking this video until the end and see that message, um, please reach out to us. <laughs> this is a, uh, yeah, reach out to us if you have any comment, feedback, suggestion. Uh, we are very open to hear uh, about, about you. And our first contributors are like our leaders. So uh, I just want to thank you all very much. Um, what we've been doing is, is just a start. It's been full of surprising surprises and I am looking forward to uh, continue working with you. So thank you, thank you for being part of it. Uh, it really means a lot, not only to us, but I'm sure to many, many people to come. So thank you. Uh, can, I, can I just uh, uh, say one thing before we finish? I just uh, have a concern about the timelines. So I've, I've seen that it's one of the criteria. Mm -hmm. And because we're such in a early stage and there are so many actors that, you know, so many things that don't depend on us, uh, I find it very difficult to have a timeline. Like I, I, I can see what are the different steps, but like to put a time on it, it doesn't depend on me. So like I, it's something that I'm a little bit concerned about. So in fact, you don't have to, uh, to so it's a good concern. Um, but if you explain your constraints, for example, and, and you say like, this is my, your status and uh, the way you work and uh, you plan to work on the project, the idea is to really be as um, pragmatical and realistic as possible. It's like, how do you plan to develop the project in, uh, you know, in the next month, basically? Um, so the goal is not to have the, the, the biggest and the densest uh, timeline ever. It's really to be able to show that uh, you actually, um, you know, propose a realistic goal and a realistic timeline, uh, knowing, knowing your own constraints. But yeah, I think even more, more importantly, if you're like, if your project is in the development phase uh, and not in the implementation phase, uh, I think what is interesting is to actually have thought about it. Um, it's not much about having a very detailed plan. If this is not uh, relevant to the stage you are at, then don't really bother with it. Um, so what we're trying to do is not to put like a lot of burden on your shoulders, uh, is actually just to help you ask like the, the right questions. So if something is not relevant to you, uh, you can either ask, like, ask us, uh, you can chat with us, but about just like the timeline, uh, if you, like I would say, if you have like a one year goal and say, okay, within six months, I want to be at that stage. And uh, in about a year, I want to reach out to uh, doctors and submit maybe some ideas. It doesn't have to be very complicated. We try to we try to develop the grid uh, as precisely as we could, uh, but it doesn't mean you have to go in that level of details. So no no pressure. Like you do that you do that on your own time. You have many other things to deal with. Uh, if uh, we don't request you to work full time on on this, uh, it would it would just like make no sense. So do what you can and what you feel is relevant for you, for your own. Everything was said, just um, looking forward to the next weeks and to the 18th of December, where there will be the award ceremony and the end of commune and where we will discuss about the maturation phase, the second phase of commune. So you are all very welcome to attend, not only project leaders, but everyone uh, you want to invite to. And uh, I will, of course, send uh, invitations to everyone.